YouTube, what's going on guys? My name is Mike and I'm back with another video. So uh, a lot of things happened. Uh, I don't think I posted a video in what, uh, like seven months? I think it was in the early spring. I, um, I took some time away. As you can see, I'm sure you notice, my hair's gone now. So I got rid of the hair and I got married. So I bought a house. We did a lot of things in these last couple of months. So I didn't have a lot of time to film videos, but um, here we are, it's December. We're in the early winter here in New Jersey. Um, and we've had a pretty mild winter so far, mild late fall. It's been in the 50s, uh, high 40s. Um, we had a couple dips down into the low 20s, but no more than a day or two. Enough, not enough for the ground to freeze. Um, and as you can see, I'm standing here in front of my uh, brown turkey fig tree. Now, it did really well this year. Uh, it grew better than it ever has. And I think that had to do with the mild winter that we had last year. It didn't really uh, freeze to the point where it had to die back down to the ground. Um, now, the brown turkey is a pretty hard, cold, hardy fig. And this particular one does really well in the winter as well. I actually have a little microclimate. Um, it's in front of the building here um, it gets the sun the building warms up and then kind of heats the area a little bit more than if it were out in the field with the wind blowing and stuff so um, with all that it does a really good uh, job overwintering and it, it doesn't typically die back to the ground but you just never know and that's what this video is about today so what I'm gonna be doing is taking fig cuttings um, from the top top growth the growth that happened this past year and then some of the growth that happened last year and I'm gonna be quartering them up showing you guys how to do that and um, and preserve them for the spring just in case you do have a, a deep frost and you lose your entire fig tree uh, this year so um, without further ado it's kind of a lengthy intro but uh, let's dive into it Okay, guys. So I um, I got you guys in my in my hand now. Just so uh, it'll be a little bit easier to maneuver around and give you guys some good close-ups of what we're looking at here. So um, this is obviously the fig tree, or more like a fig bush. It's it's kind of out of control. Um, and we're, what we're doing is we're pruning it back, and we're taking the the cuttings that we take, and we are gonna try to preserve these over the winter. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do three things, three things, not two things, three things. Um, I'm going to take cuts of this. I'm going to put them in the refrigerator in a Ziploc bag uh, to, to safely overwinter them so that we can make some good uh, clones next year, some cuttings next year. Um, second, I'm going to be putting some of these into taking cuts, the, the, the right size cuts and taking them and putting them in some sand over in the greenhouse right there for over winter on a heat map. See if we can get some roots throughout the, the New Jersey winter here. And then uh, finally, I'm just going to take some, some bigger cuts, some of the bigger stuff, and I'm going to put them in my living room and see if I can't get some roots out of them just over winter in my living room. Gives me something to look at over the winter, right guys? It's all about fun. So, um, so yeah, so what I'll do is I'll prop you guys back up and I'll explain to you what we're really looking for. Um, if you notice, there's some fruit that's set up at the top there. Um, this fruit is, is the stuff that set in the, the late summer, early or mid to late summer. It's called the Breba fruit, B-R-E-B-A. And what this is, is typically the fruit that grows on the, the newest growth of the fig tree. So that this particular year's growth. So as you can see, um, this was here last year. You can see I pruned it back right here last year. And then because of that, these grew up. Um, and in one season, it was able to grow and then set fruit. Now the fruit set too late, so it wasn't able to, to ripen off. And it, as the tree went dormant in the fall, this fruit just died. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably pull a lot of this stuff off, give it to the, the chickens, they'll enjoy it. Um, and uh, we'll take our cuttings from that material up top. So let me set you guys up um, and I'll start to cut some of these down and, and show you what, exactly what we're looking for. And then we'll, we'll stick them in some sand. I'll show you guys how to get the propagation process going. So stay tuned. Okay, so first things first, you gotta get a good pair of, um, of pruners. Um, these are just some hand shears or hand pruners. Um, typically you wanna steril sterilize them. You, I just take some rubbing alcohol, I just rub it over the blade, and then I sharpen the blade up. This way I know that there's no um, hiding pathogens or, or diseases that can, can get into my fig tree and end up killing it or something. So just a little side of precaution. Like I said, you want to use pretty sharp, but it's not gonna be the end of the world. Um, you just don't wanna crush the cambium layer, which is where your roots are gonna be coming from, that, that, that first layer 
that surrounds the pithy interior. Um, so what we're doing is I'll show you guys what we're looking for. We're looking for um, about a little bit thicker than a pencil, but a little bit thinner than a marker. So I'll go ahead, I'll take this cut right at the bottom here just to bring it over for demonstration. Um, so here we go. We're getting rid of the, the fruit. This We just pull that off, they come right off, they're rotted anyway. And now this is a great candidate here. So as you can see, we have a, a dormant bud at the top. This will open up in the spring. Um, and we want to go down about, you need at least three nodes. So what a node is, is um, let's see if I can get a good shot here. You can see right here is a node. Now above you see there's about two, two little holes right there, two spaces where something could come from. The bottom one actually was last year's leaf. That was the leaf set. And the top one is a potentially a new bud um, where new growth will come from. So what we need is three of these uh, like, you know, budding areas, whatever you want to call these, you need three. So we have one here, we have one here, and then we have one right here. So what we'll do is just for uh, education purposes here, I will go ahead and I'll cut right there, and then I'll count three above that, and I'll cut right there. And now what that gives us is... Let me back up a little bit. It gives us a perfect cut. Um, so you want to, and we can count the bud one, two, three. It's probably about uh, something like six to eight inches, somewhere like that. I don't have a measuring stick with me here, but um, that's a good cut. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the tree. We're going to take a bunch of these. Like I said, I have three different projects I want to do. I want to get a ton of these things. Um, and I'm going to leave some on the tree just in case for next year, uh, if the winter, if the tree doesn't die back, I'll have a lot of new material in the winter or the early spring to do this again. So I'm really looking to get a ton of fig cuts this year give them out to friends sell them to you guys uh so all over the, do it do every plant them all over the place so um let's go ahead let's get cutting these now that you guys know what we're looking for i'm going to speed this up so you can kind of follow along how i'm doing it stay tuned Okay, guys, so here we go. Um, as you can see, I just uh, kind of sped around, just took off some cuts. I still have a ton more on this tree, guys. I underestimated how much uh, fig cuttings or, or branches there are here. Look how many fig cuts there are. Just look how nice and uh, healthy this, this wood is in here. These are going to make some, for some great cuts, and I have so many. So uh, listen. Leave a comment down below, guys. If you want one of these, I'll send one out for free. Just uh, pay shipping and uh, listen, these, these, this is a lot of figs here. I'd be happy to send it to you guys. So um, let's go in the greenhouse. It's a little bit cooler in there, warmer in there. Um, and we'll get these processed up and stuck and I'll show you guys what we're doing. Let's go over there now. All right, guys. So I got you in the greenhouse now. I kind of have a table, a little workstation set up. Um, obviously I got the fig cuts here. Uh, I got my garden gnome. I love to have him hanging out. He's got the, the morel mushroom with him. So that's a good gardening spirit. Um, so what we have, or we, like I just kind of briefly went over it out by the tree is we have our branch, right? So I'm going to go over what we're looking for one more time. Um, we're counting three nodes. So let's start at the bottom here. So we have one, we have two and we have three. So right there, we just go ahead and we take our cut, just like that. And now we have um, a fig cutting. That's really it. So I'm going to go through this entire bre this entire pile here. I'm going to go ahead and process all these, and then we'll get into the next step. So um, stick around. And uh, hey, guys, listen, don't forget to like and subscribe. I mean, uh, I appreciate it. I know that I kind of went away from you guys for a little bit, but I'm back now. 
and um, I'd like to grow this channel. So let's go ahead, hit the like button, subscribe if you want to see more from me, um, and if you want to continue on with this project here, I'll have updates throughout the winter. So uh, let's go ahead, let's get these processed, and I'll be right back. I got them all processed. I just uh, saved you guys the time. Uh, you didn't have to see all that, but I basically just went through each one of those branches. I segmented them up. I made sure I have at least three nodes on each one. Went through, I cleaned them up. All the fruit is gone. Um, and what I'm left with is two of these little totes um, of cuts, which is uh, way more than I think I'm going to need. But hey, better be safe than sorry, right? If we have them, let's use them. So. Well, now what we're going to do is, like I said in the beginning of the video, we're going to use these uh, for three different things. One of them, like I said, is I'm going to put them in a Ziploc bag just like this. What I'm going to do is store these over winter to then root them in the spring. And that's as simple as just taking the, the, the cuts and putting them in the bag, right? You take, once you have your cuts in the bag, some of them are just a little bit too long. I didn't really measure. But once you have your cuts in the bag, you roll your bag up, you put it in the refrigerator. You put it in the, the crisper drawer, the, the cold cut drawer, whatever, out of the way so your wife doesn't throw them away, um, which I think mine might, so I'll have a, a backup bag somewhere else. And, um, and we'll just save these over winter. Now, what I've seen online, I've done a little bit more looking up than I probably should have, but um, some guys, what they'll do is they'll, they'll rub, rub these down with soap and water. And what that's gonna do is before you put it in the bag, um, and store it, it's gonna kill any or get rid of any uh, mold, spores, or any kind of pests or things that might be living on the surface of the bark, um, which will then just grow and then eventually kill your fig cuttings um, as they overwinter in your refrigerator there. So um, I'll, I'll probably give that a try. I'd actually never did that before, so um, I've had good success without it. I'm gonna do it this time just because I can and why not, right? So you guys should too. Second one is, as you guys can see, I have this little, uh, this little tote, this little uh, thing that was on sale at Home Depot. I got it for like, uh, I think it was a dollar for each one of these. I picked up a half a dozen. So what I did was then I drilled a bunch of holes in the bottom, as you can see. I just, no rhythm or rhyme to it, just put some holes in the bottom. And then um, grab yourself some play sand and fill up the thing with play sand. Now, there's a lot of different rooting mediums you can use or, or mediums that will root the figs. Um, some people use tree bark, which is really good. Uh, it's yeah, Really what you're looking for is something that's inert, meaning there's no activity, there's no nutrition, there's nothing that's gonna feed other organisms in this medium. So if you have sawdust, if you have tree bark, if you have, um, it really just an inert medium. In my case, I'm going to be using just play sand because uh, where I live, we don't have uh, a pretty big milling industry, so there's not much tree bark available, but tr uh, play sand will do. Um, second, what you're going to want to do here is you're going to want to use a rooting hormone. Um, you don't have to. There's guys online that don't use a rooting hormone, and they have great success. Um, but and I'm in the camp, whereas if there's something available to make this process easier and give us a better success rate, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and go for it. So I have a rooting hormone, it's called Clonex. Uh, let me grab that to show you guys. Okay, and so this is Clonex. This is the rooting hormone that I'm gonna be using. Uh, there's other ones, there's Hormidin, there's, um, there's a couple different ones. This one's a gel, some are powders. Uh, it really doesn't matter, guys. It really doesn't matter. They're all pretty good. I've used a bunch of them. I haven't used all of them, but I'm sure that if it's a rooting hormone um, and it's marketed online and, and it has a ton of reviews, then you can't go wrong with that, guys. We're not, this isn't rocket science here. So once you have your play sand, your rooting hormone, your cut, there's one last thing that you guys are going to want to do. And I'm pardon the, uh, the shaking. I'm going to move you guys over, but this is your heating mat. So you're going to want to have some kind of bottom heat. Now I have this on right now and I can tell you right now, it's a good 50, 60, maybe even 70 degrees. This thing isn't that hot, but it keeps um, heat coming from the bottom. And as you know, heat rises and it'll rise through the, the medium here. Um, and like I said, I'm in my greenhouse. This is, I live in New Jersey. Uh, it's the winter time. It gets pretty cold here. This greenhouse isn't heated. I won't be heating it until the spring once I get my um, my veggie starts going. But um, that bottom heat, I'm hoping 
is enough to keep these things alive and, and, and actually root them over the winter. So this is a little experiment we're playing with today. Um, but okay, so now that we've done all that, let me show you guys what we're doing here. Very simple, very, very simple. You take your rooting hormone, you take your cut, you're looking for the direction that's up. So if you look really closely here, you can kind of see, we went over that, you have the, um, the bottom hole there on the node is where the leaf was. The top one is actually the new bud. Um, so what you want to do is you want to make sure that the new bud is on top of the leaf node. Again, here's another, let me try to zoom in for you guys. There's the leaf node on the bottom, and above that is the bud. So you want to make sure that the bud is on top. Um, some people, what they do is they'll score, um, they'll go ahead and they'll score the, the one side of this, and people think that they're in the camp, you know, I'll show you again, that, um, that this will help callus right in that score, and then roots will come out of that. Um, I, me, I, I personally, I don't do that. I don't, I don't think you need to do that. When, when I've done some experimentation, I've actually pulled a rooted fig cut out of the ground or out of the, the medium, and there was roots all around the, um, the cambium layer there, which is that, that little internal pith. Uh, the, um, I'm not sure you can see it. It's almost like the skin right before the bark. Uh, that's the cambium layer, and that is where the roots are actually going to shoot out of. Um, and I've seen it, I've scored it before, I've actually taken a chunk out with a razor blade, and no, that part actually just calluses over, or it'll, it'll just rot, and uh, the roots don't come from there, the roots come from the bottom. So, it, that's what, I, in my experience. Also, if you notice on this cut itself, there's all these little white dots. I'm, I don't know if my camera's picking that up, but there's all these little white dots on it. Those will actually swell up. They'll become callus, and those can even shoot bud, uh, roots out. So um, there's a lot of places this thing can root. I don't typically like to score it. It's just adding another area for the uh, disease to get into or the plant to start to rot. Um, so without further ado, let's go ahead and do this. So we'll use one of these as a, I'll actually use this one as a dibbler. So what I like to do is I'll pre- Pre-make my holes here. I'll do three across. You really only have to go about an inch apart. I've seen people pack these things in pretty, pretty crazy. Um, but I'll go about an inch. Every each each cut will get a square inch. So. All right, we got our holes pre-dug, um, and now the next thing that we're gonna do is you take one, of your, take one of your fig cuts, you wanna just dip it into the rooting hormone, just like that. This is a gel one, like I said, it's gonna be, a, um, it's gonna uh, kinda cake on a little bit. If you have a, if you have a uh, powder, wet the, wet the root first, or wet the bark first, and then dip it in your powder. Uh, you don't have to do that, you can just dip it in the powder. You really, as long as you just introduce some rooting hormone, you'll have some good luck. And we're just going to kind of stick it in the hole that we made. I'll show you guys how we do that again. So once again, make sure you're facing up. Make sure that your bud is on top of the, the leaf uh, node there. And just go ahead and stick it right in there. Pack it down a little. And yeah, this uh, hopefully these will root. That's really it, guys. So I'm going to go ahead. I'll probably speed the video up here. And I'll show you guys how I'm doing this. And I'm going to fill these all in. All right, guys. Stay tuned. Okay, so just like that, that's um, that's really it, guys. It's, you just uh, dip them and stick them. So that was the second thing that we're doing. So like, let's just quick recap. We have one go, one pack is going into the refrigerator for the winter. This second thing, this little tote here is going is going to sit right here in the greenhouse. Door is going to be closed. No heat. It's going to be winter. Uh, we have the bottom heat going. We're going to hope for roots. Are we gonna get them? We don't know, but we're gonna hope for roots. And the third thing is, I'm taking one of these home with me. I'm gonna put it in my living room and I'm gonna watch it over uh, the winter. Just every couple of days, I'll take a look. I bought these clear, uh, I bought these clear totes for a reason because we'll be able to see roots once these things root out really good. They'll sh they'll see the roots. They'll rub right up against the side of this tote, and we'll know that we had success. So I'm gonna take this one home, uh, put it in my living room, and we'll see what goes on. So I'll update you on that as the time goes. But um, I guess that's it, guys. We can wrap this video up here. So you saw. 
uh, you know, the, the cuttings from the, uh, the fig tree all the way to their, their final destination or close to their final destination uh, as we try to root these. Um, go ahead, like and subscribe if, if you like this content. If you want to see more from me, subscribe. Uh, I'll definitely be trying to pump out some more content over winter as much as I can. And um, I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for tuning in. Take care. Okay, guys, excuse the dog bed. Just wanted to um, do a quick wrap up here. So I just finished up. Um, I have this one's coming home with me. I have the pack that's going into the refrigerator for the winter here. And, uh, and then I have the four trays that are on the heating mat that are going to sit in the greenhouse all winter. Nothing more than the bottom heat that they're getting. Um, we'll see what they do. So uh, yeah, that's it. Just wanted to give you guys a quick little update on um, the end product here. And uh, I didn't count how many there were, but as you can see, I got top, different, all different sizes, different widths. I have top, some have tops with buds, some are just cuts. So we'll see what they do. And um, I don't know if I mentioned it, but real quick, don't worry about uh, how tight um, and packed in. The roots won't tangle up. I mean, they will a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, we're in place sand. We'll be able to break the roots apart and, and untangle and weave them around uh, when these start to root, and then we'll get them in their own pots. So uh, yeah, that's really it. Just wanted to quickly say that before I let you guys go, and um, have a happy new year. I'll see you guys uh, in the next one. Take care, bye.